I'm talking of the model in the symbiotic cycle because I didn't mention this before, but it's of course we're making a breast um, cast here. It's setting, but it's too um, it's too hot still to take out, so that has to stay for a little bit longer. Um, but also when I was saying that um, the sort of uh, craving for a tribe and the craving for a symbiotic, to be part of a symbiotic cycle, um, I guess that also in a way is the, not the starting point, but it's one of the main um, sort of discord points in my work that I'm interested in attraction and repulsion. And skin is the divider between what's seen as outside of the body and inside of the body and what happens yeah, when you open up those boundaries, metaphorically open up those boundaries. But um, yeah, and that the it's that, that it's sort of I find it's almost like a gray zone that people are attracted by something, and once they, for example, with the burdens of excess series, they come close and realize, oh, it is actually a gross-looking thing that is disguised as a luxury item or sort of place with the cues of a luxury item, but that they also can't stop themselves from looking at it. And I've noticed this in exhibitions um, where people, when they think no one is invigilating or, or watching them, they just quickly want to touch and sort of, you know, just see how it feels to press the fingernail into it. So it, it's, yeah, it is that borderline between attraction and repulsion and that gray zone where it sort of hovers between the two. And I find that really interesting to observe. Um, yeah, and it's become a long-term project. Didn't quite intend to, but it has become a long-term project. And also show you, because this one now, oh yeah, we go back to waxing. This one now should have a sort of, yeah, and you have to come a bit closer. So the consistency now is sort of malleable. So for example, if I, I, I sometimes also work like this, where if an area needs filling, I then take the wax like this and fill an entire area. So we sort of covered this hole here now. And then I scrape it off a bit. This still has, this has white spirit on it. So then I blend it in. I take it a bit closer. Then I blend it in. A bit more white spirit. Need a bit more white spirit. Um, then I blend it in with white spirit. And for obvious reasons, it's really important not to mix the right spirit with the hot wax that is being burned, uh, being melted, because that would not go well. So now we blended that hole in. Um, and the thing is, I have to say, the whole process of how I work with the wax and sort of paint with the wax and build up the different layers, um, I also really like it because it has a very meditative quality. Because, for example, I mean, I was feeling the bit down here, but now I just realize that's my little, that's my very little tool. Oh, here. But now I just realize that up here is a bit, it's a sort of a block of too dark. So I'm scraping this one gently away. And the, the thing is you can become, and I probably have, you can become really obsessed with just the sort of different, yeah, color hued layers. So see, now I've slightly reduced the, the dark red on this. Still scraping off a bit more. Now I, now I blend it together. Well, maybe I still take a bit more off. Need to get the wax off. Hold on, so. Okay. 
But that's when I said that wax is one of the the only sculpting material that I know that is so flexible in terms of taking something, taking material off and putting it back on. Um, so for example, if I wasn't working on this continuously and if the wax was really, you know, cooled down, um, one way of, com of completely changing the shape again is just by plugging in the hair blow dryer and warming it up and then the, the wax layer becomes malleable and then you can scrape it off, not with this tool, but then I would, um, would use one of those um, plates and sort of scrape it down again and almost you could almost, I could almost go as far down as the resin and take it all off. So for me, as a, as a sculpting material, it is really ideal because it is so, yeah, you can sort of change your mind a lot about it in terms of where you want the shape to go. See, and now I just notice up here, maybe you can do a couple of close-ups here, just so I sort of show, I want this, or this needs to be blended a bit more. So I'm curving it around as I'm also taking it off. Just need to get the wax off, so. And then there's a little bump here. Glad I did my nails. See, and now I'm blending it. Yeah, I'm much, much happier how the color hues are coming together in the top here. Why have you used the electrical tool? Um, oh, I, I don't want to use an electrical tool. I enjoy um, the layering and taking off with the blade. Well, yeah, no, you, you could use an electrical tool. Now, let's see if this press is set. Yeah, that should come out in theory. So... And here we have, still very warm. Um, yeah, so this is a classic wax cast. Um, and I'm trying to see if there's any, because if, because it's still so warm, if there were any, I can't really see any, yeah, there's a little bit of a dent there. Um, I can now, again, with the modeling tool, um, I can, still change the shape and very gently go over it. Uh, you see, I want to fill this one in. So I'm going... Taking it off a bit and blend it. And then there's at the bottom here, there's a little piece. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, so when I first started to work with wax in college, I was only taught how to make, how to, how to use it in a way of making casts. And so I would then create something like this or a different shape, but some, you know, I would create a wax cast and then use oil paints and paint it. And I really quickly realized it always looks painted, which is why I then sort of self-taught myself the method of building, of painting with the wax rather than casting it and just building up different layers. What I sometimes also do, I mean, that's not suitable for, um, this will darken up a bit because you can see here, here it's still really, really hot, but out here it's, getting at the rim here. It's getting a little bit darker because it's cooling down. So in the end, the color will be about two shades darker, which is why I always do my color samples on the ceramic to sort of get an idea because when you look at the hot wax on the brush, it's not actually the color it will become to. Now, what was I saying? Oh yeah, sometimes not for the outdoor pieces, but sometimes for the indoor pieces, I add a layer of, um, Silicon. Um, which gives it that sort of 
what do you call it? It's almost, it almost makes it look like it's constantly, yeah, moist or wet. But the silicone doesn't work for outdoor pieces. So that is solely for indoor. It's nice and warm. The good thing with, I have to say, the good thing with the um, silicone molds is those ones, I, I can reuse them. You know, I can make 20 of them, for example, or 40, or I can make a hundred of them. I can go into big production. So that's much, in a way, the, the process is quicker, whereas the way I do it with painting, with the different hues of um, flesh-colored wax, is a much more time-consuming way of doing it. Um, but the overall result is what, I, what I'm after, rather than with the costs. This came from a different, um, this is a little nipple, which came from a different silicone cast. But as you can, I mean, the difference here is this is a solid piece of, you know, it's like five centimeters down of wax. Whereas this one here, if I hold it nicely against the light, is literally just a tiny, tiny, um, a tiny little layer of wax. And that in a way, um, gives it a really nice fragility. And again, here for this cast, I made it with alginate. And alginate is a is the material that dentists use for, to do imprints of um, the teeth, but it literally picks up on every little um, skin crease. So it's a really um, high definition casting material. Um, and I guess the times when I now make um, use wax casts is just to create tiny little layers rather than rather than sort of solid um, pieces. I would say it's definitely between the wax and the resin because um, yeah, as I was saying, if the pieces are installed outdoors, the the wax element sort of melts away. And then it's about revealing the next layer. The next layer is then the, the resin layer. It's very intuitive. And it's also, that's the, the element that brings me the most joy is intuitively just building up layers. And the fact that there is never an end point. I mean, I'm just looking at, you have to put the camera here. I'm just looking at, you know, it's almost like a little skin rash going on here. So I sort of know this needs a bit more blending. And it is, it's a never ending, yeah, it's a never ending thing. So I really enjoy the never endingness because it means um, the process can become very um, meditative rather than a means to an end of reaching an end point. And I often, um, yeah, just start with a section and then, you know, four hours later, I'm, I'm sort of, I moved on from that section, but I'm still on that sort of patch. And yeah, it's definitely, it's the process that I still really enjoy. And the smell of the hot wax and the sort of, the, the you know, I'm a tactile person. I like the way it feels. And maybe the casting it was almost, the, as in making wax casts, was almost too quick because by making the decision what you use as a shape for the silicone mold, you then already made the, the sort of decision of what the shape is to come out. Whereas the way I work, does that make sense? The way I work with building up the layers, the shape can change or I can take off or add on or, you know, cut it in half again.